हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू द न्यू लेसन लेसन नंबर थ्री वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस लेसन फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो दिस इज़ द फर्स्ट वीडियो एंड दिस लेसन इज अबाउट प्लानिंग ओके सो दिस इज़ एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन द जी एस थ्री सिलेबस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल्स अबाउट द सिलेबस इन अवर लेसन नंबर जीरो द वेरी फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेसन सीरीज एंड देर आई हैव एक्सप्लेन टू यू द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस टॉपिक ऑल्सो so planning is a very very important economic activity um, through which the government allocates resources to various activities and uh, basically the aim is to achieve development uh, to have uh, growth and development in the country that is why planning is done uh, so let us see how economic planning is done in india what model do we follow what is the history of it and uh, how have we arrived at the present model of economic planning so we need to have a very very basic understanding of the entire uh, economic system right from the independence and uh, there are some reasons why we adopted uh, you know planning in india uh, some of the reason uh, is attributed to the colonial regime before the independence so let us understand that uh, how economic planning happens in india now before we start about the planning let us first understand why planning is required okay what is planning and why planning is required so the definition of planning says that planning is basically a government strategic plan for resource allocation over time to achieve specific national goals so government has to achieve some national goals so what are these national goals this may be growth this may be development this may be uh, you know low inflation this may be job creation this may be infrastructure development this may be education this may be uh, health so there may be so many goals that the government wants to achieve uh, uh, you know uh, in the country now in order to achieve these national goals we the government has to make a plan and it has to be a strategic plan so there are these these are the keywords in this definition actually it is a strategic plan to achieve national goals related to what for resource allocation so this is the most important point i want to tell you resource allocation now why do we need to make a plan for resource allocation from here we'll understand why planning is needed see the basic idea of the subject of economics is that there is not unlimited resources so resources are limited they are not unlimited not unlimited resources we don't have infinite resources so there is limited resources and our needs or our demands are more than the resources available so whatever we need as a country at the moment it is more than the resources at our disposal so in order to prioritize the goals in order to prioritize this needs this demands of the economy of the people we need to allocate resources properly for different goals and that is where planning is required so it's not like ki we can allocate any amount to education any amount to health any amount to infrastructure any amount to uh, you know growth development because we have limited money we have limited financial resources so that forms the basis of the subject of economics and that is what economics is all about so planning is basically to allocate resources properly allocation of resources to various sectors for various goals how it is done and how it will achieve the uh, the required goal that is a secondary topic that we are going to see how much are we able to be successful in achieving our goals that we had set for ourselves but that is basically what economic planning is all about okay so it's like a person he wants to achieve something and in order to achieve that something he has some resources that he uses and then he works upon it and then he either reaches there or he is not able to reach fully he reaches 50% or 80% or even more than that that depends on various other circumstances so similarly happens with the countries also with the government also now let us look at the historical context 
uh, why do why did we adopt planning in our country so pre independence economic conditions and why india adopted planning post 1947 let us try to understand this let us look at what were the pre independence economic conditions in our country what led to adoption of planning there might be a direct question in the mains examination why did india adopt planning as a economic policy after independence okay or write a note on the uh, brief uh, or write a brief account of the economic planning in india after independence so we need to understand what were the pre independence economic conditions in the country so the first one is agriculture dominance and low productivity so we know that india was typically an agrarian economy 70 to 75 percent people were dependent on agriculture and this agriculture was not a modern agriculture it was having low productivity very basic type of agriculture where it was not having that much production or productivity and income levels were very very low it was stagnant the growth rate was stagnant low productivity due to outdated techniques poor irrigation neglect by the colonial government land tenure systems so exploitative zamindari systems rayatwari systems widespread rural poverty because of this exploitative systems landlessness indebtedness famines these were all the problems with the farmers and you know people at large in the rural country in the, in, the, in in the rural india so uh, this was the background uh, with which we got the independence and therefore economic planning was necessary in order to first increase the incomes of the farmers to give farmers their rights to give them irrigation so that they can have better uh, crop so so that they can have better yield so those were some of the important uh you know preferences that the government had to first give we will study in detail about this zamindari and rayatwari systems when we study the land reforms in our country okay so when we come to this topic we are going to study in detail you must have studied this in your history also what were these systems these were basically land tenure system in various parts of the country during the british rule zamindari system was mostly in west bengal odisha bihar and some part of northern india whereas rayatwari system was mostly in south and western india okay so just keep this thing in mind we are going to see this in more detail uh, in the uh, land reform lesson the second point was de industrialization and decline of handicraft so you must be knowing that india was very rich in handicraft and we had a lot of cottage industries we had lot of artisans and craftsmen but britishers slowly slowly they uh, kind of exploited those industries also and uh, india was forced to deindustrialize uh, because of industrial revolution in the in the britain in the uk and in the europe most of the indian uh, industries indigenous industries they were uh, you know um, they were killed uh, there was decline in handicraft and also the income of the people so transition to raw material exporter so before we used to export the finished goods uh, you know maybe handicraft or sarees or dress material etc uh, but once uh, the britishers started uh, exporting raw materials from india we only became the importers of british manufactured goods so basically there was a drain of wealth from our country so they were purchasing raw material at a very very low cost and they were selling their product at a high cost and we were forced to purchase it destruction of local industries and mass unemployment particularly in skilled artisan community so there was a lot of unemployment during the british rule because they destroyed the local industries trade imbalance significant outflow of wealth drain of wealth theory you must have heard so again this is the background so we were left in a very very poor condition uh, by the britishers when it comes to uh, industrialization in our country industrialization was not present in the country when britishers left us industrial growth under colonial rule was minimal confined to few sectors like textiles that too only in bombay and jute in bengal so very very few industries were present in our country at the time of britishers that also they had done because it was uh, cheaper for them to produce this uh, the uh, you know this textiles in in the country in the, in india itself and not to export the raw material they found that it was more um, cheaper for them to produce it here and sell it here 
India lacked a diversified industrial base and lagged far behind in sectors like steel, machinery and chemical industry. See, I am telling this to you because when we look further, you will see that in our first, second and initial five years plan, we had given a lot of focus on agricultural productivity and establishing the basic industries in our countries. Okay, basic industries meaning steel, cement, machinery, chemical, these industries which form the basis of the economy and which which can supply the uh, the uh, uh, the products to other industries for example if we have machinery manufacturing uh, factory then it can supply those machineries to other factories steel again it is used for construction and constructing other factories chemical is used in many industries so these are the basic industries that we focused on in the initial five year plans that we are going to see there was very limited infrastructure development during the british rule again uh, we have studied this in history also. Next is that economic exploitation and drain of wealth. So there were unfa unfavorable trade terms, raw material export at low prices and import of finished goods at higher cost. So the, the, the terms of trade TOT was not favorable for the country because our export was at a low cost and the import from the British was at a high cost. So terms of trade was not favorable for us. Drain theory meaning the the wealth was being drained away from India in the form of taxes, profits, salaries of the British officials posted in India. So they were giving very huge salaries to their officers who were posted in British India. Then they were imposing a lot of taxes on us and lot of profits for their factories and industries were uh, being taken from the Indians. So the drain theory, this theory was given by Dada Bhai Nauroji. You must have studied this. He was a uh, you know nationalist uh, economist uh, who had given this theory then famine and poverty uh, uh, there were a lot of famines during the British rule in India uh, because and poverty was also there starvation deaths Bengal famine of 1943 was the worst indifference of colonial administration towards Indian welfare they, they did not care where the Indian population had any kind of social welfare whether they had good health, good education, good literacy, any, uh, nothing. So they did not care about anything. Widespread poverty, malnutrition, lack of health care, very little state intervention was there during the British rule. So these all formed the priorities for the Indian government immediately after independence. Then neglected social sectors. So social sectors meaning education, health care, sanitation, uh, other things. They were neglected during the British rules. Very, very little attention was paid to education and healthcare. And all these uh, points that we have discussed today, these uh, form the background why we adopted planning and how did we start planning in our country. So in the next video, we are going to see why India adopted planning post-1947. In this video, we have seen the pre-independence background. Now, in the next video, we will study why we adopted planning post-1947, how planning can help us in achieving this objectives. So let us continue in the next video. Thank you.